I do too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break. To, I'm just recording myself. So I can criticize myself. Um, kidneys and adrenal glands are critical to normal body function. As I mentioned several times already, adrenal hormones maintain the proper sugar levels that are necessary to cope with stress. Something along the way, or you want to ask again? Yeah. So I'm, I'm interested to know about how, uh, you know, food affects the brain function. Uh -huh. so, you know, it seems like, like as I age, the you know, one glass of wine can send me into, you know, that I'm, I, it seems like I'm not processing food and sugar affects my, you know, I, I really crave protein and. As I'm aging, it seems like I'm more sensitive to what I eat, how it affects how alert and how. That's well. absolutely true. And, and as people age, definitely getting protein in the morning has been, across research for years and years, has shown that that helps maintain effective, a better blood sugar level throughout the day. You don't crave sugars as much as you have protein early on. Eating Eating foods that in combination have a low glycemic index is important as well to maintain the blood sugar everywhere. The brain uses sugar to work, and so if the blood sugar is going off, then the brain is not going to function as well. The, the longer we live, the more we're exposed to all kinds of toxins in the environment. Uh, children born nowadays are a little toxic waste dump. Uh, the, testing was done many years ago in 2007 by the Environmental Working Group where they tested the umbilical blood of uh, mm -hmm. newborns. And they tested for all these different chemicals, maybe 250 chemicals. And 85% of them had, I don't know, 200 different ones positive for chemicals. So the placenta is not a barrier as we used to think it was. So kids are already born with a lot of toxins because there's 100,000 new chemicals in the environment that never existed in the 1910s. 100,000, possibly. Since the 1910? About 1920, there might have been 2,000 or 2,500 mm -hmm. chemicals. You think about the, the development of industry over the years. Mm -hmm. And you know the, the cloth dye industry was one of the first chemical industries that ever existed. And, um, a lot of places in Germany and elsewhere developed out of that. And so organic chemistry is from dye chemistry. And so, you know, we've got we've got all kinds of things. We've got this device here that's not certainly this is not made of wool out of wool cotton or anything natural. Right. And there's no way we could have done it. Silicon chips are not just sand for process. So hundred thousand new chemicals in our in the environment that we're exposed to. And like you, you deal with water processing, right? And so I always recommend people have some water filtration system of some sort at the source where they're drinking all the time. Um, because at least that's one less place that you're getting all these types of chemicals. Anti antibiotics, chemotherapeutic agents that have been dumped down the toilet over the number of years and so uh, Toxic metals. So actually clearing those things from your body is important to do to help here are some of the neurotoxic effects that are showing up with brain fog. So it's not just blood sugar, it can be other things outside that are causing the degeneration. Well, the stress, I mean, the stress and the adrenals and the data. It has a big effect, yes, absolutely. It has a big effect. And inflammatory reactions to foods, things of that nature, trigger things in the brain that cause uh, brain fog, decreased memory function, etc. As well as injuries and things. Have you ever had any injuries? Not <laughs> right. So those kind of things can throw off the, the Maybe system. I forgot though. Toxins cause inflammation these two separate. Toxins can be toxic and they can cause an inflammatory response as well. And other things can also cause inflammatory response. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. there's some things, for example, like a jet fuel. People do a lot of flying and stuff, and it's, it's in the air. And uh, more antigens, more chemicals in your body that disrupt the processes, the more mistakes the body starts making. So jet fuel, can, you could also have antibody to jet fuel. Antibodies are the body's 
wanted posters in the post office, telling the rest of the body, watch out for this one. If, if this one enters the body, we have to like, go capture it right away. So that's a delayed response the immune system has. If we're producing antibodies to something, it means it's become an inflammatory product. It, it, it's inflamed relatively. It might be toxic, it's just like lead. Lead is neurotoxic. We don't want that in our body. But it can also become antigenic. So it, they don't necessarily go one to the next, but it's possible. We're discovering more and more how that can happen. And there, there are certain processes the liver does, and it does it the same way no matter what the toxins are. So we help support the liver. That's one of the things that we do in this process. Like on that, that uh, sheet that has a very complex thing. This, this nutritional influ influences on estrogen metabolism. All of these processes going on here are going on in the liver. That's its job. It had to go on the brain, it had to go on the stomach. It's the liver's job. So here you see it says 5-hydroxyestrone, for example, here. And then here's methoxyestrone. So the body changes it, hydroxylates first, and then it methylates something. And then it's more water soluble, so you can pee it out poop it out, spit it out, fry it out, sweat it out. Because of the main water avenues that we get stuff out of our body. So part of our process is supporting the liver's function to clear those things out because it's got a long to do this and it just gets longer and longer. And we can't always get around to things. So after that, did that answer your question, sort of? After menopause, one of the adrenal hormones is converted by the body into estrogen. Therefore, an evaluation of kidney and adrenal function is essential in hormone-related health problems. So cortisol can get shifted back and forth. Cortisol. There, there's, there, in that chart, again, this, this part here has much more complicated charts. They get switched back and forth. So um, one of the ways that we test this is by doing pulse diagnosis in Chinese medicine where we can feel what's going on with the kidney and adrenal function. Because diet, the organ system, and stress can affect one's moods, these areas should be evaluated before taking possibly addictive and dangerous mood-altering drugs such as Pro uh, Prozac, Valium, etc. So many people take medications because of mood issues, but they're actually due to hormonal imbalances. And so we aren't dealing actually with the underlying cause of this now. So it's obvious from what we covered that a holistic approach is essential to treat these problems. Each potential problem area needs to be evaluated in order to achieve maximal health results. So the test that might be done as part of a holistic evaluation include extensive history and evaluation of uncover the nature of the problem. Pulse diagnosis performed on the artery that runs down the arm just before the wrist. It's called the radial artery. This is done to evaluate organ function. Tongue diagnosis, which is done to evaluate overall function of the health of the body. Range of motion studies. Palpation, pressing on muscles to determine how the blood and energy are circulating in the body. And also feeling temperature differences in the body. That gives us information about blood flow. And other tests that might be necessary. 